My two favorite space franchises were both doing their season three thing at the same time, and boy was I surprised when Star Trek Picard turned out to be the good one. That was the case, however, and the reason it came as such a shock to me is because, as a lifelong fan of Star Trek The Next Generation, the first two seasons of Picard were not exactly my cup of Earl Grey. So, if there's anyone out there who hears from nerds like me how great season three was and feels compelled to check it out for themselves by starting from the very beginning, let me save you some time. Here now is everything you need to know from seasons one and two of Star Trek Picard. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not a lot. Season number one. Huh? Admiral Jean-Luc Picard has a rare genetic disease. This person, who is not Dr. Crusher, tells him that he's dying, but whatever, he's fine. Until the very last episode when he suddenly drops dead, surrounded by a bunch of random people who aren't the old crew of the Enterprise, including Voyager 7 of 9 and a woman named Raffi. Nope. There you go. In the afterlife, Data tells Picard that he too wants to die because, as he puts it, a butterfly that lives forever is really not a butterfly at all. What? Picard's consciousness gets transferred into a synthetic new body that looks exactly like an 80-something-year-old James McAvoy. And the first thing he does is yoink Data's butterfly wings. Yay? Oh, also, Riker and Troy miss their dead son. Sounds like fun. Mm, does it? Season 2. Q's back. Remember him? He sends Picard and a bunch of random people who aren't the old crew of the Enterprise to an alternate reality. From there, they travel back in time to a cheaper filming location before Q eventually decides to put everything right back to the way it was. And then he dies, because apparently watching characters from my childhood die just makes for a fun Friday night these days. After that, Picard decides to engage in a relationship with this person who is also not Dr. Crusher. Did you, did you see what I did? There? And that's pretty much it. All of that and a love for the next generation, and you have everything you need to enjoy Star Trek Picard, starting with Season 3, Episode 1. Which just so happens to be titled, The Next Generation. Well, how about that? Now, sure, I had some issues with Season 3 here and there, but they're irrelevant, because boy oh boy does this show stick the landing. It writes several wrongs that have occurred since the Next Gen finale, the callbacks are all very well earned, the characters each have their moment and are true to form while still bringing something new to show how they've changed over time. It's fan service, but I don't know, it's done right. So without giving too much away, showrunner Terry Metalis has teased a spin-off series of sorts that, if true, could potentially be what I've been hoping for ever since they've been making new Star Trek. So if we get a spin-off show with characters like Seven, Raffi, Jimmy the Footman, great, I'm for it. Seriously. Hashtag Star Trek Legacy, hashtag release the Metalis cut, gimme the G, whatever it takes to get it done, or rather, Make it so. <laughs> I'm hilarious.